Here I'm going to explain to you the basics of Hess's law. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route by which the chemical change occurs. So let's take some examples of this and I'll explain to you how we can apply Hess's law to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction. So this is example one where we want to calculate enthalpy changes of a reaction using the enthalpies of combustion. Uh, where everything takes place under standard conditions. Let's write out the reaction first. So my reaction is going to be ethene combining with steam to give me, just make that a straight line. So ethene combining with stream, steam to give me ethanol. So this is the enthalpy change I'm trying to find out. I'm going to call it enthalpy change of the reaction and that's my unknown parameter. Okay. So in this example, we're going to assume that we are given the values for enthalpy changes of combustion. So let's write down the enthalpy changes for combustion over products of the uh, enthalpy change of combustion over here, which are going to be, let me move this up a little bit. Which are going to be CO2 and water. So now if we draw an arrow pointing downwards, this represents the enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol, which I'm going to call as 1. And we go to an arrow pointing downwards from here, which represents the enthalpy change of combustion of ethane and water. So we have to add up both the values. Also you need to remember that we have um, more than one mole over here. You need to multiply the value that you're given by the number of moles. So I'm going to call this enthalpy change of combustion number two. Now Hess's law states that you can go to the combustion products using either this route or the route that I'm showing with the mouse over here. So let me change the color of the pen and show this to you in a different color. So route one is going from ethene and water to CO2 and water. So that is route one. Now route two goes from ethene and water via forming ethanol which is then combusted to give us CO2 and water, so that's root 2. So Hess's law states that root 1 is equal to root 2, which means that delta Hc2 is equal to delta Hr plus delta Hc1. Now, delta HR is our unknown parameter, so we want to rearrange this equation. So, we rearrange this equation to say delta HR is equal to delta HC2 minus delta HC1, and that will give you the answer. So, I hope um, I've made Hess's law a bit more clear. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me via the comment box below. And in the next few videos, I'm going to try and upload different variations of Hess's law. Thanks for listening.